This video is brought to you powered by my Patreon backers across Patreon and YouTube's little community bit over this here. If you'd like to jump aboard what has Patreon playfully been described as a nihilistic cult in the worship of snarkasm, here. do like click the link to either the Patreon or the community which is in the description in the below. And while we're here, thank you so much to Kerry D, Sarah S, T-Rex, Chris D, Alex S, David V, Pingu, Stuart, Kai, Jeff M, Bo, Mojo Sabian, and then... Peter Del Monte, Aaron S, Ned B, Simon F, Martin M, Rachel H, MJ Nichols, uh, Paul W, Ian B, on court une fois, my namesake over here, Aid, uh, Cycletricity, Gareth J, and Tracy W. Tracy Dubs, what work? <laughs> Yo, 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 how are we doing, people? Uh, what's going on? Uh, ladies and gents, welcome back to Aid Thompson and other disappointments. Uh, here we go. Let's crack open the first beer, shall we, for this evening. Hope you're well, guys. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're just sort of adjusting to the news that's just broken over the last hour or so, uh, you're in the right place. Um, <laughs> you're in good company here. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome to the show, guys. Um, this is uh, A. Thompson and other disappointments. It's your twice weekly delve into the worlds of awfulness, politics, uh, news, uh, despair, more awfulness, pain, and salient, somber sadness. Uh, all the S's this week. Uh, big shout out to the Patreons and the YouTube community members. What's going on? Um, it's a very unprepared show this week, guys. Um, very unprepared or ill-prepared, either or. Um, which is actually quite, is quite appropriate, uh, for reasons that I will touch on in, uh, in a moment. Um, sometimes when people, like, I have, I have a guest's book ahead of time, and, uh, this week I, I'd sort of loosely, loosey-goosey booked, uh, Star B, who's been on the show uh, before and then she had to pull out uh, due to like personal reasons sort of stuff um, and like most of the time if I have a, a guest kind of ish sort of book like it's it's provisional like it might happen but they'll get back to me that sort of thing I usually have one in the chamber you know I usually have a solo show kind of half prepped ready to go uh, but tonight <laughs> tonight I have no such solo show really prepped to go with uh tonight she said that she couldn't make it and then i was like well i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do then i don't know what i'm gonna talk about you know if she's not here to talk with me about deprivation social inequality uh the journey that she's personally been on what is there to talk about tonight and then lo and behold boom goes the notif on my phone uh on the Sky News app. And, uh, you know, now, as of half past six tonight, or whenever it was that that news dropped, uh, obviously we all know what I'm going to talk about now. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, but anyway, before I get uh, before I get going, guys, uh, about that, that thing, and my various threads that I've written over it uh, over the last couple of weeks, um, let me just say that on this show, on this episode, guys, if you want to comment, if you want to throw a question into the mix, if you've ever wanted me to read out your comment, right, this edition is a fantastic opportunity for you because I may need some serious help mining the material this evening. I'm going to keep the little chat bit open. Uh, I should have it on my on my screen. Here we go. We've got our people in the live chat on the same screen as me uh if you're watching this on youtube uh, if you're listening on catch up on apple podcasts or spotify then obviously you won't see the chat uh free flowing but uh but yeah uh, right okay so should we should we get into it i'll just uh have a quick swig of funny liquid patience liquid humor see if i can fuel myself into being something resembling entertaining for you um so it's it's a weird news day now, 
isn't it? It wasn't a weird news day, but it has become a weird news evening, I think. Um, it's, it's a strange time. It's full of strange developments and stuff and things at the moment. At time of recording here on this live stream, um, as of like a, about an hour ago, a Princess Kate Middleton has revealed that she has got cancer, guys. And there's a whole weird photo period, uh, manufactured images, and then the, you know, the radio silence for weeks, and all of that weirdness. It, it appears that now that was all down to a cancer diagnosis, is what is sort of coming out of the wash. Uh... And it's kind of hard to make sense of this, I think. Is it not? Because we come through this this colossal period of rumour and supposed conspiracy. But equally, on a human level, it's kind of totally understandable, you know? Do you know what I mean? Like, like if we just try to wrap our heads around all this for a second, right? If you had abdominal surgery and then they found cancer in there while they were rooting around right and they tell you that you've got cancer and it could be serious but it also might be treatable and you've got like kids and a husband then yes you can you can totally understand the need to protect your children from the media intrusion that you might need some time to adjust to it, to mat to reason with it yourself in your head, your mental health. But then also, if you are super high profile, you can also understand and empathize that you would need to protect your kids in that situation from the media intrusion, from the questions, from the headlines, from the trolling, probably, right? So, yes, I understand all of that stuff. But equally, <laughs> and I, I don't want to make this sound like I'm mocking her situation. I'm absolutely not. I'm just trying to make sense of this. I'm trying to let it swirl around in my head and think it through out loud with you guys. Equally, like bearing in mind all of that, equally, I'm not suggesting it's fake. Because I think that even that, that would be a step too far for even Buckingham Palace, you know, who you may have picked up. I'm not the greatest of fans of. But it is a bit weird, right? When people are saying things about your husband, right? Rumours are flying that your husband was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that your husband had done something. It is a bit weird that with these rumours flying around, all of this chatter happening, these aspersions being cast, that you would just go, well, yeah, you know, but still, I'd rather have everyone think the absolute worst about my marriage, about my husband, about this whole situation. I'd rather that people were thinking the wor that it was a messy, torrid, collapsing nightmare. I'd rather they thought that than to find out about this thing that I'm now actually totally at ease about telling you. Like, it's it's a little bit weird, isn't it? Still. I mean, I've, I've never had cancer, guys. Thank God. Touch wood, right? And neither has my partner. You know, as far as I know, we're all good. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. And I have no idea what that entails. Like if you're with somebody and you've both got kids together and then they get diagnosis or they even think that there's a possibility that it might something might turn cancerous or something like. I don't know what that's like and what pressure that puts on you and what kind of need for space and privacy you might feel that you need or, or whatever. And I've certainly never had any tabloids on my case either, you know, printing pictures or threatening to expose my kids to frightening truths about me or what I'm going through and all that. So I don't know, like, maybe it's just me and my ignorance, and my naivety, right? 
But I still feel a little bit like, you know, for Buckingham Palace to have bothered to doctor a photo, you know, for the rumours to have exploded at exactly the same time, for the total absence of any footage of her, that all of those weeks, three months, it's just, you know, that's the thing that's kind of weirding me out about it. And in con in ch conjunction, or con I don't know, in in uh, in addition to is the word I'm looking for. In addition to all that weirdness, isn't it kind of strange that we now have three members of the same family all suffering with cancer at the exact same time? Like, when was the last royal family member who had cancer who went through? Did Princess Margaret have cancer, or did she just have a couple of strokes and severe alcoholism? Is that her deal? But, like, I don't think there's... I, I struggle to remember another member of the royal family who's had a cancer diagnosis. But now, in the space of three months, we've had King Charles, prostate, although we still don't really know what it is that's wrong with him. A lot of people are saying it's way more serious than anyone is letting on. King Charles' prostate, Fergie, skin cancer, and now Kate Middleton, something else. Also unconfirmed. Yet three members of the royal family, all with cancer, at exactly the same time. Like, what are the, what are the odds of that? What are the sheer chances of that happening to three senior members, members of the royal family? All at once. And I'll tell you what, right? If Fergie, the King, and Kate, if those three snuff it and Andrew doesn't, I am going to be so mad. I'm going to be <laughs> infuriated. Like, it's always the good ones that go, you know? Like, I'm not a royalist. You may have picked up on that. But I think King Charles is kind of, you know, ish, all right. I feel kind of similar about him as I did about, you know, Lizzie. In that I'm not a massive fan of the royal family. I think they should be wound down substantially. And defunded and all the rest of it. But I think if you're going to have a royal family. If you're going to insist on a sovereign. I feel like Lizzie before and now Charles, I feel like they're about the best that you can expect. You know, they're not tyrants. They're not egomaniacs, seemingly. Prince, Char Prince Charles. Uh, King Charles is still, you know, he's, he's always been relatively in touch with uh, the environmental activism movements and so on. I think they're about as good as you can expect from a monarchy within a constitutional monarchy setup. So if Charles, Fergie and Kate snuff it, but Andrew survive, like it's always the good ones that go, isn't it? It's always the good ones that die young. And then you're going to end up with like, I don't know, something will happen to William. or something. Like We're going to end up with Prince Andrew ascending to the throne. <laughs> he's going to end up as king, isn't he? He's going to be grinning like he's on the final level of Saltburn or some shit. <laughs> king Andrew. Like you have got to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I, I hope that it's not serious for her and I feel bad now about, you know, all the rumors and for the threads that I wrote and other people wrote, you know, like Christ. And you know what? Like, I'm so glad, so glad guys, dear listeners, dear viewers, members of my Binfluencer cult. I'm so glad that I did not post the thread that I was going to <laughs> because, whoo, wow. I mean, the stuff that I had heard was going on was just like, just imagine if all of that was rubbish, if it was all just completely made up and somebody had briefed it to me 
to, to somebody that they trust and then like it ended up in my DMs and I just took it at face value and retailed it out, you know? And this is what she was going through like the whole time actually in reality. And I just like retailed that nonsense out, horrible disparaging stuff. And look, some of it could have been true, right? And this could all be rubbish. It's a real like mind fudge. <laughs> Trying to keep it a little bit clean. I keep getting demonetized, guys. But it's a real mind fudge because it could, all of that could still be true. And it could be this that is made up. But it's probably not, right? It's probably not. This is probably real. But if it wasn't, you know, if it turned out that the palace were lying about this after they had lied about that photo, which they did, and about the queen, about I mean, like the proper queen, right? The actual queen. Not this, you know, fucking panto horse they're currently calling the queen. I mean, the actual queen, Queen Lizzie, right? They lied about the Queen's imbecile diagnosed cousins. Do you remember those? And then they left them to rot in a loony bin. Completely unacknowledged them. Ostracised them. They lied about that. They lied about this photo. Now, I'm not saying that Kate is lying. She's probably not. <laughs> but if it turned out that the palace were lying, again, <laughs> on a scale of one to Harry's father. <laughs> How surprised would you be? Is is all I'm asking, guys. Um. So yeah. Anyway, uh, let me let me just jump jump into the chat chat. Um. God, see, I can't talk tonight. I'm obviously not prepped. I haven't done my vocal warm ups or my feminist empowerment mantras. Um. Let's just quickly go into the the chat. I would love to uh, uh love to see some of your comments on this. So, um. Mojo Sabian said, those bar chords don't play theme. Uh, don't play themselves, you know. Was that to do with the intro music? Did we have intro music tonight? I don't know if we did. Uh, or were you talking about... I, I noticed people were talking about like old school like bands, like Genesis, in the chat earlier. Um, uh, so maybe it was about that. I don't know. Uh, Richard Marston's in the house. What's up, Rich? Um, uh, he says, God, I love AIDS intro. Rocking. Thank you, man. It's um, I, I get all of my music uh, off YouTube, like royalty free accounts. I'm such a cheapskate. At some point, I will actually commission someone or I'll write something myself on Cubase or or something. But for now, I just like if you go searching for um, like royalty free or like free to use grunge or free to use like punk rock, that, that sort of stuff, you'll find it. There's that. And then. The, the music that I use at the end of, like, the uh, uh, the alternative paper reviews, it's all, like, grunge royalty-free stuff. Um, Tracy Birch says, Kate has cancer. Yep. Um, uh, Duke Vengeance says, I'm not a miracle. I'm a useless, belligerent asshole. <laughs> I mean, you're in, you're in good company tonight here, Duke. Um, you're a man after my own heart. I trust you've got a whiskey or a... Uh, a can of craft ale on the go. Um, Mojo Sabian, bringing it back onto uh, into the political stuff. Uh, Mojo Sabian says, uh, and also Mojo's one of my Patreons, so what's up, Mojo? Um, he says, on the lighter side, Donnie is facing bankruptcy. Woo! Yeah! Yes, he is. How do we all feel about that? Um, cheers. Because... I said this at the end of a TikTok earlier. It's like, where does this lead? You know, when you have somebody as narcissistic and sociopathic as Donald Trump, and when all he has at stake is losing the election, which is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you, you're still going to survive. You're alive. You're going to live to breathe another day or whatever, right? Losing the election is kind of nothing. Like, it's a bit humiliating for somebody who endlessly bangs on about you know, losers, he's, oh, don't, don't listen to him, he's a loser. That's what he, he calls all of his ex-employees, right? And people that he falls out with. So it's a bit humiliating. But in the grand scheme of things, losing an election isn't really a big thing. Now, what do you think a narcissistic sociopath like Donald Trump will do 
if they start seizing his assets, literally taking his money and his things away from him. Do you think that might be the catalyst? Could that be the Franz Ferdinand moment that ignites an American civil war? I mean, I don't want to get too kind of hyperbolic, too kind of hysterical, because God knows if there's a lesson that I have learned over the last couple of weeks from reading news and then going on Twitter and writing 20 tweet threads about it, it's probably that I should be a little bit less hysterical and drop the hyperbole. But it doesn't seem beyond the realms of possibility that if Donald Trump were pushed into a corner, that it could result in political violence and civil unrest. You know, where do you guys think that's headed? Um, for the benefit of those who, uh, you know, who have not um, caught up on my TikTok or, you know, watched the, uh, uh, the YouTube video that I put out earlier, um, Donald Trump is... Uh, he's $450 million in the hole, uh, basically. And uh, I'm just going to turn on my other camera. Hold up. Um, there we go. Um, he's, yeah, $450 million in the red uh, off the back of this Trump organization uh, fraud trial uh, in which the judge said that he had been hiking the value of his properties to get beneficial loans. And then come tax time, he would devalue the same properties to effectively avoid tax and so they have fined him almost half a billion dollars and he's been crambling around trying to find a way to make good on that fine desperately trying to borrow the money even though he says it's all a big political witch hunt it's a persecution the court is a kangaroo court but yet he does seem quite keen <laughs> to satisfy the judgment of that court so anyway he's not been successful yet in finding the money and he's only got until monday to do so and there's been a lot of comments back and forth off my video earlier uh where people because like i, I went through the options the ways that he could settle this debt and they are thus i'll take you through them very briefly uh now um he could pay it in cash but we kind of know that he hasn't got the liquid cash. Because if he did have the liquid cash, he would have just written the check, right? And also, if he did have the cash, he wouldn't be going around to these 30 loan companies, which he says he's been rejected by. So if he's already admitting that he's going out to seek loans from these loan companies to be able to pay the thing, that suggests that he doesn't have the money in his pocket, right? So... You could pay it in cash, but he can't pay it in cash. He could get a loan, uh, but he can't get a loan. <laughs> because I was watching a CNN thing about this earlier. He would be categorized as a credit risk because he's got so many, like, a myriad failed, dismantled businesses where he started these projects up, borrowed loads of money, wound them down, and he walks away with all of his money, but, like, the, the businesses themselves are wound up that, like, and then the banks that loaned him the money don't ever get their money back. So he's seen as a bit of a con man in some circles. So then when he goes back to these same individuals, or, you know, sometimes it's the brother of somebody who loaned him the money at Deutsche Bank or Credit Suisse or wherever, is now aware of this reputation, they take any application from him with a gigantic dumping of salt. So he can't get a loan. He hasn't got the cash. The third option is that he could use his assets. But as I pointed out on the video earlier, uh, a lot of these properties will already have loans and mortgages out on them. So the equity that he could extract from them to be able to use them as collateral is already severely kind of tempered, pulled down. So they're not worth as much, these big buildings that have his name on them, as people would maybe uh, perhaps believe. And the final thing I mentioned on this video earlier uh, was that he's not even really the owner or the outright owner of a lot of these assets. Like he owns Mar-a-Lago. He owns a penthouse at the top of Trump Tower. But in terms of the commercial property that sits beneath his name, in terms of the Avenue of America's building, these are owned by whole other companies. <laughs> He's not on the board for them. Like it's, it's somebody else's building. So 
he doesn't have an awful lot of options open to him other than taking in gigantic donations from people like Elon Musk or Vladimir Putin. But there are structures and processes in place that prohibit him from receiving money from a Vladimir Putin, from an Erdogan, from from whoever overseas. You can't take that amount of money quickly from a foreign investor. And you can't take money from people with American bank accounts if you're a political figure running for office, re-running for president. So whichever way he looks, he is just quasi-fudged. Is <laughs> the polite way of saying it. And anyway, so one of the kind of clapbacks I got off this earlier, and, and make of this what you will, you know, by all means, in the chat, let me know what you think. But one of the responses that I got was from somebody saying he won't actually uh, go bankrupt. What will happen is he will float one of his businesses, like Truth Social, for example, onto the stock market, and that will quickly bring in about a billion dollars. And then he just has to hive off half of that to make good on the fine, right? And I was like, is that true? Is that accurate? Could he do that? And then I was reminded about an article uh, that I read. This is about six months ago now. And it was a deep dive on Truth Social. And it did not look pretty. Uh, and the, the key things I remember from it, and, you know, I'm happy to be corrected on this because my memory is not the best. But I do remember people saying it, like, that is not his in entirety either. He has investors involved and wrapped up in that. So he couldn't just sell it without the say-so of the other investors. So there's that. The second thing is it's not particularly profitable. So any investors that dove headfirst into a stock market float of Truth Social would want to know that there was some route to getting profit, some sort of return on investment. And from what I remember reading about six months ago, that was just patently not the case. And then since then, since reading that article, earlier on I was thinking, and also the environment has changed. You know, think of the social media landscape and how it's changed since he set up Truth Social. You know, what has happened with Twitter and X? Do we really think there would be a market for another alt-right app out there? You know, do we actually think, we as investors, if we're about to buy Truth Social, do we truly think that advertisers who are fleeing X, advertisers who are fleeing places like GB News because they see it as so, you know, I hate to use the phrase, but it's, you know, brand cancer. They see it as toxic. They're fleeing these platforms and apps and broadcasters. Do we really think, we as investors, that they are fleeing these places to come and run to a significantly worse product with a way worse and more problematic user base. Is that what we think is happening? So, yeah, I, I don't think floating Truth Social on the stock market is going to solve any of his problems. And moreover, I don't think that's a reasonable route to financial solvency for Donald Trump like 72 hours before this payment is due. It's like, who who wants to buy Truth Social, guys? Anybody up for buying Truth Social? Yeah, yeah. Can you show us, like, all of your, like, profit and loss and, like, all of your accounts? I mean, that whole disclosure process is going to take weeks or months or, you know. It's not just you rock up to the New York Stock Exchange and go, yeah, feeling a bit light in the pocket. I might, might sell an app today. No. <laughs> um... So, yeah, let's uh, let's go back into the chat. Um, Jess Hunt says uh, he's going to have to start on only tiny hands. <laughs> I mean, what would the proposition be there, Jess? What would he actually... Did you think there's... I mean, let, let me just back up. Sorry, I'm going, going all over the place tonight. But uh, a friend of mine once said that whatever the fetish, like try and dream up the most random, disturbing weird and obviously, you know, undiagnosed, untreated fetish that you could imagine, like kneecaps, right? Kneecaps are just fundamentally not a sexy part of the anatomy. Nobody in their right mind should be turned on by kneecaps. Like, there's a reason that men, you know, typically are turned on by breasts, right? 
And that's because we associate them, you know, perhaps subconsciously, but we associate them with feeding our young. So if we're looking for a mate uh, to sire, to spawn the next generation, we might look at a partner or a potential partner with big boobs as someone who could amply feed our newborn baby. Um, or we associate it with femininity. And so, you know, you see a woman with big boobs, you think that's definitely a woman. So, OK, off I go. Um, so they're a sexual thing. Uh, I know I'm going to look back at this episode, like edit it on like Sunday or Monday, and I'll just be like, oh, my God, what did what? what how did we get onto this? Uh, and do you know what? Some of you watching this will be like, do you know what? I like the paper review aid, but like the, the kneecap fetish segment was it was a bit weird, thank, frankly. Um, but I, I suppose the point that I'm getting at is if a woman's breasts, if we're drawn to breasts because we associate them with, you know, procreation and whatever, and we're drawn to a woman like with uh, hips, the, a sh the shape of a woman, because we, you know, subconsciously we associate that with being able to bear more children, perhaps. Or, you know, these are sexual things, shapes that we are drawn to. Uh, there's nothing about a kneecap, is what I'm saying. But this friend of mine, like, years ago was like, Anything you can imagine, there is somebody out there. There is a niche market for it. So even something as fundamentally unsexy, Aid, as kneecaps, and especially your knees, Aid, are more than fundamentally unsexy. They're fucking hideous. Uh, but you can guarantee someone out there, some subset of people, will be weirdly into it. <laughs> There's a market for everything. So I guess what I'm getting at here, Jez, in a very long roundabout and, you know, rambly way is that, you know, maybe, maybe there is a subset of people out there. Perhaps there is a market for this, uh, you know, only tiny hands business. Um, Tracy Birch says, I think it was sold today. I, I might have, it might have got him out of shit. Maybe. Should we, should we quickly Google it? Let's have a look. Truth Social, sold. Um, Trump could net three billion after investors approve Truth Social to go public. That's an hour ago. Oh my God, it's big news tonight, isn't it? It's incredible. I mean, I wonder if there is. Sorry, I'll just. Uh, that's a bit of a close up, isn't it? Nobody wants to see that. It's worse than my kneecaps. Um, I wonder if it will form some sort of negotiation with the court, where it'll be like, look, look, look. Okay, look, I don't. I don't have the money right here. I know, I know I said that I was going to get you the money. I, d I did, I did. But I promise I'm good for it because look, right? And then he shows up the, the thing of the, you know, the IPO to take it public. Is that where this is headed? It will be like a sort of on paper, here you go, here's the collateral. Or does he show the IPO to one of the loan companies and then they finally agree to, to loan in the money? Like, is that where this is headed? I mean, I still really, I want him to, to go down hard. I want them to seize his assets. I do. I have a mean heart, and that is, it's just what it wants. The heart wants what it wants. I want to see him dragged out of his penthouse in his boxers, tr like trousers round his ankles, stumbling and like swearing, you know, like no dignity. <laughs> I want to see, like, dra like a Will Ferrell movie. I want it to be like, you know, the worst day of his life and the footage lives forever on the internet, right? Um, Captain Bart Roberts says, uh, uh, kneecaps. Whoa. I mean, look, I don't, I, I didn't want to have to do this um, tonight. You know, I imagine this taking place on maybe the 300th episode or the 1000th episode spectacular or something. But um, I mean, I I suppose I could share my kneecaps with you guys as a, as a special treat and, you know, largely reflective of the total dearth of material that I've <laughs> I've prepared to go through. Would you like to see my kneecaps, guys, in the live chat? Um, uh, Captain Bart Roberts says, uh, I worked with an old boy uh, when I was 16 who told me with great authority, women with complex knees are right goers. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, my God. I mean, some of the stuff that comes out of people, like it never. I, I tell you the, the, um, 
the nuance or the sort of the mechanism that never ceases to amaze me. And this is true in politics. It's true in interviews with pop culture idols. It's true with conversations with your friends around a pub table after like a couple of beers. It's true across the board. Humanity suffers from it, right? The thing that never ceases to amaze me is not that people have these thoughts. You know, everybody has weird thoughts. It's not that these thoughts pop into your brain like women with complex knees are right goers. It's the fact that it pops inside your brain and then you lack the internal PR department filter to step in the way of that thought coming out of your mouth. Now, did you not have like an internal PR department like in, that speaks to you in internal monologue? You're like, a, but you, the thought comes in, you're about to say it, and then the little PR consultant inside your head goes, like, don't, don't say that. <laughs> Are you insane? You're going to freely tell everyone around the pub table that women with complex knees are right. Are you sure that's going to come off the way that you think it is? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've totally thought it through. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm checking out. All right. Um, see you tomorrow for the self-loathing session. Uh, anyway. Um, Jess Hunt says, uh, A. Thompson discussing Trump. I want him to go down hard. Utter filth. Yeah, I mean, I think we know what I meant, Jess. Um, Richard Marsden says, don't get banned for porn aid. No, I don't think there's uh, I don't think there's much uh, chance of that. I will show you my kneecaps, though. I've started finding like I feel like I built I built it up a little bit now. All right. And the, really what I'm looking for here is some sort of reassurance that my knees aren't hideous. OK. There you go, guys. But it's not going any further, all right? I don't want a sort of situation where, like, you know, I show you a bit of knee and then you want a bit of thigh. Like, let's not go down that road. Um, Duke Vention says, I don't have a PR department. They all quit. <laughs> yeah, Tracy Birch says, no filter here. Uh, Captain Bart Roberts says, I was born with my foot in my mouth. So isn't this interesting that we all suffer from, suffer. We all have the same <laughs> no filter, just, you know, blast it out. Um and that's, you know, presumably why we're all drawn to each other on this here, this here show. Um, I did want to talk uh, for a minute about Trump's issues, if I may. Um, because he is facing bankruptcy. I mean, it's possible that this Truth Social uh, sale might contribute to some sort of negotiation, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Quick swig of beer. It's possible that it may ferment some sort of solution that allows him uh, to appeal. And then ultimately he could overturn the judgment or have it vastly reduced. That is possible. But I do think it's interesting that if he is made bankrupt, right? And if GB News continues to lose money, right? I think you see where I'm headed with this. And if the sun lost like 60 million pounds or something last year wasn't it if it wasn't last year it was the year before and even and last year they lost money also if the mail are about to do another round of redundancies guys all of these components of the right wing journo political sphere are all suffering from loss of earnings tanking profit bankruptcy all of them are and yet, as I said on Twitter earlier, representatives or fans of each one of those things will be back online next week or doing Vox Pops or appearing on Question Time. And every single one of them will be like, ha, 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 yeah, well, go woke, go broke. <laughs> like, It's so weirdly contorted and upside down, isn't it? It's like they live in opposite world. It's one of... It's one where they, as this sort of very loud but small niche subset of people, even smaller than the niche subset of people who are really into kneecaps, but it's this, it's this small subset of very loud, angry, toxic people who style themselves as a silent majority. 
who shout from the sidelines and in their minds they honestly think go woke go broke like like the minority is the woke sort of social justice lot and if you try to placate them if you try to move your business into a kind of woke paradigm then you lose this silent majority and that's why you're gonna go broke right it's so opposite and i can explain why and i i don't want to you know beat a dead horse or you know go over old ground here because i'm sure that all of you are smart enough and you all tune in regularly enough to kind of know a lot of this stuff but for the benefit of those that don't the fact is most of the uk have progressive attitudes most of the uk it's like the left vote that is split traditionally most of the uk like we you know we're pro-gay marriage we're pro lgbtq rights we are not fans of like men only garrick club kind of situations most people i would i would hedge a bet i would say most people don't really give a toss about this england kit like like it's not affecting their lives on a day-to-day basis in the same way that their bills are most people care about left of center matters the nhs social care what school can i send my kid to um most people don't give a shit about the stuff that they amp up on GB News. But yet, in the minds of the people who endlessly support Trump, GB News, you know, half the staff of Talk TV or the opinion section in The Telegraph, in the minds of those people, they are the silent majority. And if you don't appease their desires and their sensibilities, oh, well, then you've cut off the main market. Go woke, go broke. Like, it's a kind of delusion really isn't it um let's go back through uh back through my chat here if i may uh let me just scroll up a little bit um where did we get to uh before my oh my own personal uh uh chat thing is sort of frozen but um oh i've just noticed i've got a uh, a super chat from captain bart roberts uh, thanks very much for the sh- uh, super chat. And you're a YouTube community member also. I always say, like, if you're a YouTube community member or a Patreon, like, don't worry about the super chat, man. Like, I'll, I'll pick up on your comments. I know I know who you are. Um, uh, Bart says, uh, after you've tried knees, you never go back. <laughs> and you know what's concerning about that comment? The most concerning thing about that. It's not that we're talking about knee fetishes. It's not even that I showed you my knees, guys. Need a nice cold shower after those bad boys. It's the fact that after you've tried knees, you never go back by Captain Bart Roberts has got three likes, which means there's three of you in the chat who are like, yep. Yeah, no, it's true. It's, uh, I mean, I, I honestly didn't think I'd be into knees, uh, but they are strangely, strangely sexual. Um, I mean, do you think kneecaps are one of these things where like, like you, you could get into it and then you'd be you'd be disappointed and disgusted in yourself. You'd be like, I mean, I didn't really want to be into kneecaps, but now, now I'm the guy that wanks over kneecaps. It's <laughs> um, Alan McDowell um, says, rumor has it he's selling some internet chat thing he created for three billion after he got barred from X. More fool anyone that buys Truth Social, man. Like it, it's not enough of a town square to make it worth that money in a world where twitter which is basically the king don of that industry in a world where twitter famously fails to make money you know elon musk came in he was like i'm gonna make this thing profitable he sacked a load of staff he alienated the uh the advertisers um and even as advertisers there's a few advertisers have come back and even as he streamlined it it's still failing to make money or or certainly it's still failing to make money in any real way in any real way that you would want to see if you were going to i don't know invest three billion into a junior diluted worse more advertiser toxic version of it like who is investing that money um because whoever it is have i got a patreon for you jump on Give me my first billion pound super chat. Um, Tracy Birch says, I hate X. Do you know what I do too, Tracy? Um, And I feel like a hypocrite for saying that because um, 
Uh, well, let me have a, a quick swig. Swig. Let me let me wet the whistle, and then I'll sort of explain it, shall I? I mean, the thing about X. Think about I, nobody calls it X, man. Let's call it Twitter. Um, Twitter. Don't know. Don't know why I dropped a T there. Um, the thing about Twitter is it is that global town square, and it has built up a fairly irreplaceable space for itself within the social media landscape there are clones that have unsuccessfully attempted to bite a chunk out of that space you know parlor uh truth social even facebook for a bit were dabbling with the idea of you know micro blogging micro posts and so on but the brand of twitter and the apparatus and the infrastructure behind it is so developed that the idea that a blue sky or a threads or a truth social could come along and take that is a little bit fanciful. Like Twitter would have to, to really, really fall in on itself uh, for, for something like that to happen. Um, so as it's so popular and I've built up a reasonable following on there um, and it's taken me years to do so like literally years it's taken to, to get up to like twenty thousand. uh the idea that i could step away from that and basically cut off my new this is going to sound really soulless and like salesy but it is effectively a funnel of getting new people exposed to the podcast like this and to get them involved in the patreon and the meetups and the discord and um you know and and hopefully you know get them involved in the community also uh Cutting off that funnel and starting again from scratch to me just feels like, well, why is it me that has to suffer? <laughs> why is it my Patreon community that has to suffer uh, for the misdeeds of a um, slightly short-sighted and overconfident billionaire? Do you know what I mean? Like I'm on threads, I'm on Blue Sky and I do post on them, but the infrastructure and the market is simply not there yet. So... Uh, until it is, I, yeah, it's, um, or until something goes really bad with, with Twitter and it becomes unusable or whatever, then I'm, I'm basically sort of stuck there. Um, uh, Mojo Sapien says blue tick aid. Yes. So this is the thing. I mean, if you are a content creator, you basically have to buy the blue tick because most content creators produce clips of video and Twitter has itself restylized or recategorized itself now as a predominantly or like mostly video first platform which is why when you go onto your for you page now on twitter your for you feed a huge chunk of the stuff that you're seeing now is no longer just you know like somebody 20 words where they go like oh woke up this morning had a bit of a funny toe <laughs> lol it's like less of that stuff and it is more people sharing a video directly or people quote tweeting a video or people replying back to a video because that's where the engagement is. Um, so if you're a content creator, you're probably sharing videos that are like, you know, three minutes long is like the optimum and they have a limit because they're shrewd mother hubbards. Uh, they have a limit of like two minutes, 20. And if you want to upload more videos uh, that are longer, then you have to pay the, the thing. Um, so even though myself, Super Tansky, other people were like mocked mercilessly when we bought the blue ticks. Uh, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you have to buy the blue tick if you make content. If you're one of these people who never makes any content and all you do is like write silly little jokes or little quips about stuff. Great. Don't get the blue tick. It's fine. But I don't see much value or integrity in them replying back to content creators with a thing that says like this motherfucker paid for Twitter because it's like I have to because <laughs> this is where the bread and butter is coming in and I have to upload videos because that's kind of what I do. So, yeah. Um, Kerry Dodd says uh, I'd be lost without social media, especially TikTok. I'm disabled and it's a lifeline. That said, I've never liked Twitter and left as soon as Musk took over. Yeah, I mean, I, I applaud anyone that's in a position to leave Twitter and to make a stand. Uh, Davey Moo completely fucked it off. Uh, he was like, no, can't justify it. Um, and I've got other friends who also have uh, just completely clocked out of it. Um, and I think that's fine. Like that's, I, I applaud them for taking a stand like that. 
I think, <clears throat> if I'm being really brutally honest, guys, with myself, I think what gets in the way of me doing that, and I have, I did leave for about a month uh, when they threatened to take the block feature away because that really was, you know, to me, that felt like playing with fire. Like, there are women out there who I know who have gone through really serious situations with ex-boyfriends, ex-husbands, threats of domestic violence, threats that they're going to be murdered, like serious stuff. And even when their new partners or brothers or dads text the guy that's doing it and say, if you don't leave my daughter alone or my wife or my girlfriend or whatever, uh, I'm calling the police and the police will come. They still don't stop. And the only respite this individual has is to change their number and hope this new person doesn't find out about it or get it off someone else uh, and block them. Now, if you remove that block feature and suddenly this dangerous ex-husband has access to a year or two years or three years of this woman's social media, where she's been tagged, photos of her with her friends, who she's hanging out with now, maybe even, God forbid, a new boyfriend that really then upsets this guy and sets him off. Like, that seemed to me to be completely beyond the pale. Like, why would you do that? You are making this hugely dangerous for no benefit. Um, so I did quit Twitter for about a month when that happened. And I was like, I don't like it. Like, you know, I like doing Twitter. And it's, as I, as I keep saying, it's where the, the funnel is to get people involved. Um, but then they, they rode back on it. They never addressed it either. They never said, we've listened to your concerns. Uh, and actually, yeah, we agree. It would be really dangerous and irresponsible. They just didn't do it. So if they did do that, I think I probably would leave. Um, I've just got uh, got five more minutes, guys, and then I need to uh, then I need to jump off, and then I'll jump in the Discord with the Patreons and the community backers. Um, D Healy, I think it says D Healy. My my styling is a little bit messed up on there, isn't it? Uh, D Healy says, uh, "Let's all do something positive today. Signed a petition to bring back the Orville." The petition is nearly at its goal. I liked the Orville. Am I missing something here? The Orville. I'm not like the puppet from the children's TV show. Is that what we're saying? Bring back Orville? Or is it like a pub? Is it a famous venue? What on earth is the Orville, guys? Um, we'll, do, we'll do a couple more questions and then... Uh, and then I'll jump off. Oh, Peter Del Monte's in the chat. Peter Del Monte's in the house. Um, and then I need to to panic edit this uh, while I'm chatting to people in the Discord. Um, and then, uh, oh, of course it is. Sorry, somebody. Uh, I I've, sometimes I feel a bit sorry for people listening to this back on Apple and Spotify because <clears throat> they sometimes miss a bit of the context with the live chat. But somebody in the live chat has just said. Uh, it's a Seth MacFarlane sci-fi series and it's just popped in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, yes, I remember it. I remember when it came out. I remember my brother bigging it up to me saying, oh yeah, you should, you should give it a watch. Do you know what? I've never seen it. Uh, so maybe that's my, um, that's my task to take away for the weekend. I'll, uh, I'll give it a watch Sunday morning when I'm hungover. Um, yeah, I'll do a, a couple more questions, guys. If you've got any more questions, uh, chuck them in, uh, Chuck them in the live chat. Um, I'm going to jump in the Discord. I'm going to chat with my Patreons. Uh, then I'm going to go on Labour Social at 9 o'clock. I'm going to panic drink two beers while I'm editing, while I'm talking in the Discord. And then by the time I jump on Labour Social, I may no longer be this sober, guys. <laughs> Maybe a deterioration in the quality of my output. Uh, and I can tell some of you are probably thinking, a deterioration in... <laughs> In this quality, really? Wow. Sat there with your skatey t-shirt on, 43 years old, IT worker with bags under your eyes, with your unprepped podcast, freestyling it, phoning it in, Aid, You're going to deteriorate from this, are you? Wow, I can't wait to see that. Um, uh, Duke Vention says, you drunkard. Uh, Tracy Birch says, it's a parody. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we've covered the Orville now. I will, I'll give it a... I'll give it a bash. Uh, Tracy Birch says, no change there then, Aid. Uh, joining Labour Social Hammers. I am usually more pissed than this, though. Because um, I usually have a guest on on Friday night and we're sort of kind of sitting here drinking together. Whereas tonight, it's me doing all the talking, so I'm not, you know, I'm slow. Um, 
Perry Fry says, uh, Georgism tax land, uh, Georgism tax land, not people, is the answer to closing the wealth gap. Yes. <clears throat> Have you guys been watching, um, did you take my lead? Like, I don't know if you listened to the solo show this week. I was talking about that Gary's economics guy. Um, if you missed that show, that episode midweek, um, go and check out Gary's economics, Gary Stevenson, his name is. And he talks a lot about closing that wealth gap. <clears throat> and he was, I got my girlfriend watching his videos as well. And she was like, I'm addicted to this guy. And I was like, I know he's, he's like super smart, but really engaging, very relatable. And uh, in the video that she watched, she was saying he was explaining how up until the Second World War, basically, inequality has had always been rife. And it was only after the Second World War that we taxed the rich. Like, we actually really properly taxed the rich, and that enabled us, that gave us the funds to adequately support the working and middle class. And that's why you had that closure of the inequality gap, and people developed quite nice lifestyles <laughs> in the 50s, 60s, 70s, right up 80s and 90s. It's only after, like, the last 15 years or so that it's just got really bad as we've sold off all the assets and uh yeah anyway I, I don't want to you know retail out his entire video go and go and check him out um kerry dodd says i love gary stevenson yes mate yes um yeah me too um listen guys i'm gonna have to jump off um thank you so much for uh for jumping on though tonight um i do enjoy doing these shows and do you know what i like i like doing the live streams when it's just me i just sometimes i feel a little bit guilty like like it should be prepped more it should be funnier or I, I don't know so um uh, if you want me to do a few more of these i'll you know i'll try and find the time and jump out here uh, a little bit more uh, like maybe a tuesday night or or a sunday night or something um but anyway that's it from me for now i'm going to jump over into the discord with the patreons if you are in a position to join the patreon or the youtube community do consider hitting the links in the descriptions um or uh, alternatively you can drop me a little super thanks if you tap the three dots underneath this video there's a little like thing I, what is it it's like share it's uh yeah so like, you know what you do like three dots and then there's a little thanks icon in there you can drop me a little tip um that's it for now though thanks once again until next time keep it booge keep it strictly hashtag binfluencer and we are out this mother hubbard